Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Sasha. Um, it's been a while, it's been a, about a month since I've been on and I thought that I would sit down and have a bit of a heart to heart and share with you a bit of the shitty stuff that's been going on with me um, and just let you know why I've not been around. Uh, it's been a really, really hard past couple months. Um, I've had a lot of bad news in my life and... I haven't been able to be online. I thought I would create something while I'm chatting with you and then I'll kind of try and fill you in of what I'm doing on screen if you start to get lost. But I didn't want to have just a sad, down, depressing video for the whole time. So we ended up moving house, which was super duper exciting. We got our lovely, beautiful dream home, really nice big house, double the size of our last one. Um, which has been amazing. We we absolutely love it. Um, I only got to spend a week in it so far, um, so I will tell you why. So as some of you know, my mum is still in Canada, which is where I'm from, um, and we ended up having a lot of issues with her uh, over this past few months. She uh, just started having lots of health issues and we couldn't work out why. Uh, there was a lot of hospital appointments. Um, some time spent in hospital and it was all very stressful and we didn't know what was going on but she basically lost a hundred pounds or more in a few months so it was um, really drastic and really quite frightening. Started having issues with uh, using her legs and her arms, uh, things just weren't really working anymore, uh, lots of health concerns. So um, through a lot of appointments that um, my uncle and a family friend have done with my mom. Uh, we came to find out that she has a very serious condition uh, that is going to deeply impact her life uh, and the quality of life and um, the life expectancy as well. So it's um, nothing good news, all bad news, quite devastating and a bit difficult to come to grips with. Uh, so I have flown home for Christmas to be with my mom and um, that's what I've been doing for the past three weeks. So we moved into our house and then I flew home to Canada to be with her and support her and try and help with some of these appointments. So that's a brief summary of what's been going on in my life. Um, the timeline is not good so I will be coming back to Canada again in a couple months to spend more time with her. Uh, it's meant that I've had to leave the kids and my husband behind and that's been really, really hard on me as well. I miss them a lot. So that's where I've been. That's why you've not seen me. Um, I've been um, struggling a lot. It's been really hard, really, really hard. Um, I don't have a dad. I just got my mom and my grandparents were also like my parents and I lost them both in the past um, couple of years as well so it's just been a bit of a roller coaster and I know we'll get through it and it'll be fine but if you are somebody that says a prayer that prays at least of God I would love your prayers um I'm quite a strong Christian um and I keep forgetting to pray which is silly but if you do pray I would love some prayers for my mom uh for my family for the people helping my mom be very appreciated okay we're gonna crack on with crafting because that's just such a happy thing for me and I think it's been really hard being here because I haven't been able to get to my craft desk and create and be in my sort of happy zoned out place so let's do some crafting so I cut up my card base and I made a DL card uh, in the UK that is the same as like your slimline card but it fits our size of paper and I've got this piece of white card stuck here and I am just applying some double-sided sticky back onto the white card. Then I'm going to die cut out my lovely little uh, hexagon shapes. Next I'm going to take my decorative paper and I'm going to do the same thing but I'm putting the sticky on the front of them. So I've picked out the colors that I want and what I'm going to do is take my scraps of double-sided sticky which is the stuff here. I'm going to cut them to roughly the size of the outside die that cuts sort of the same sized shape as my little die cuts are going to cut. So it's the exact same octagon shape or hexagon shape. I never get the shape right, I apologize. And I'm just going to stick that on the top there and I'm going to cut out the solid 
hexagon shape and then that way I've got a nice beautiful background. So the reason I stuck the double sided sticky onto these white ones is so that that little shape can stick down onto my solid shapes. Oh, I'm gonna say with shape way too much so I apologize my mind's all over the place and I filmed this before I left for Canada and before we moved. So this video is like six weeks old and I'm trying to remember what I was doing. So I'm sprinkling on, this is iridescent clear glitter. If I can find the link for this, I'll put it down below for you. I'll try and link everything I can if I can find it still. It's been a little while. All I do is stick the glitter on and really, really rub it in hard. And then that way the glitter doesn't come off. And then that way the die cut, the intricate die cut will stick beautifully to the top of that and give us this gorgeous sort of look to the top. So I'm kind of glitzing up my paper. I'm taking the pattern paper that I've already got in my stash and I'm making it into something pretty and sparkly and more unique. So you can pay a lot of money for um, designer paper pads that are like this where you get this um, beautiful glitter to the top. So this is how you can kind of cheat and make your own beautiful glitter paper without costing a heck of a lot. This bit with the intricate die cuts can be a bit faffy because you're cutting it all out and then it gets a bit sticky, but sometimes you can just kind of put your finger onto the back of the intricate die cut and all the bits that have cut out will stick to your finger and that's kind of a nice quick way. So I go ahead and I stick it down and I press it down nice and firmly and because that glitter is all really stuck down on the top of our designer paper, you end up with your die cut sticking really nice because it's not going to lift off, the glitter's not loose so it stays beautifully. If you want to give it a really firm press, you can grab your release sheet and stick it back on top and then that way you don't damage your die cut by rubbing over it quite hard. So I've got my beautiful little ones there ready to go. Now I'm going to prep the top of my card base. So I've got a card panel that's going to fit right on top of my little card base. It's cut to about half a centimeter on all sides smaller. Now I don't know if you've got one of these kind of... Um, boards like a little embossing board or um, scoring board and I find it slippy slidies all over my desk so to avoid that I just take a bit of blue tack blue tack is always in my craft office I love blue tack you'll see it again in a minute and I'm just putting it on the four corners which actually coincidentally has little circles there sometimes I like to angle my <laughs> scoreboard to the side because it's find it easier to use my um, right hand when it's to the side but I just use that and then it doesn't wiggle around. Now I've got my stylus, so you can see the blue tack on the one end there. It's my pick-me-up tool as well. And all I'm going to do is just follow the lines on my scoreboard. So I think they're an eighth of an inch, not 100% sure, but I'm just following those lines. And I'm just doing enough until I feel like I've got a kind of pretty pattern. But you can see here, my cardstock does not go all the way um, down. The board does not cover my cardstock. So you can see at the very bottom there, it doesn't reach the whole entire bottom. All I do is take it and slide it back on top of my scoreboard and just kind of wiggle it until you feel it kind of slot in place. And once it's not wiggling at all anymore and you can feel those ridges are stuck in the ridges of the scoreboard, you can go ahead and drag your stylus up the other end to finish off your score lines. So if it's too long, that's kind of the trick to make it work. Then I want to do another pattern down the side. So I've got kind of just the two edges of got a pattern. This is a great way if you don't have an embossing die like an embossing folder. This is a great way to add a bit of character to your cards by making your own little embossing marks into it. And it kind of gives it a classy feel as well. So when I'm done, I just pop that off, take off the blue tack, and then shove it in my drawer. Now, at this point, you should stamp your card first. I went ahead and stuck on my dimensional tape to make it pop up a bit. You want to stamp first and I completely forgot at this point to do my stamping. I got a little excited. I wanted to stick it together. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure do your stamping first otherwise it's a bit lumpy and you might have a little bit of an issue. Now if you want to line this up perfectly on the top of your card and you've really only got a small bit of wiggle room to work with because you've got maybe a half a centimeter or like an eighth of an inch on all sides, then just add some liquid glue onto the top of your foam tape and that will allow you to kind of wiggle it a bit into place before it's stuck down permanently. Just buys you a bit of time. So I've got my little doodads all ready to go, my little embellishments. And I just kind of line them up first, work out where I want them to go and how I want them to look before I go ahead and do my stamping and placing them down. This is a stamp set from Alina's shop. I will link it if it's still available. I think I got it like a year and a half ago. And it's got a whole bunch of cute little sayings in it. It really works well for a lot of different occasions. 
and I'm going to use a gray ink. I didn't want black. I felt like black was going to be way too dark for the subtle colors that I've got going on because with adding that glitter, it almost makes it look more pastel than a bright color. And I thought gray would work better than black. So you see my little day didn't work out there so well because of the foam tape, but it's okay. I had my stamp platform and I was just very gentle when I pushed it down. I'm going to add some more dimension to the back of my embellishments. So I'm adding on some foam stickers just to pop it up a little bit more. And then I can place those down on my card exactly where I want them to go. I kind of line them up while I'm sticking them down because if I do one at a time, I always get them wonky <laughs> so if I place them all on I know where I'm going and I can get them lined up perfectly once they're in place I give them a firm press now these gems are from Alina's shop on Aliexpress they are my favorite gems and what I do is I like to stick down my glue first and then I apply my little gems onto the top and now you can see my little DIY sticky tool right in play. I just put a little bit of uh, blue tack on the end of my stylus and then I can just pick those up nice and easy. And if I use a pokey tool to kind of hold them down, they just stick beautifully and they don't tend to pop off. The glue is nice and strong and they stay on. So that is the end of my tutorial for today and the end of my video. I'm sorry for the downer message at the beginning, but I wanted to let you know why I've been absent and that there might be a few blips where I'm a bit absent again, but I miss it. This is my happy place and this is where I kind of regroup and just kind of get back to me. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you had a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. And I will be seeing you probably again in a couple weeks once I'm over the jet lag when I get home. Take care. Bye for now.